If you're a realtor or an investor that has multiple listings or deals at any given time, and you're doing Facebook advertising, you're going to want to stay for this video. I'm going to share the Facebook catalog manager as a way for you to load all those properties into the Facebook system and generate a single ad campaign that will create a carousel of all your properties at once. This is going to save you valuable time and money in your marketing efforts. If you like this content, you may want to consider subscribing and hit the like button so we can share this strategy to others in the marketplace. Hello, I am Smarty on the ProEdge Marketing Channel. Welcome to my site. Here on this channel, I focus on helping realtors, investors, and entrepreneurs leverage technology and different strategies to help grow your business, generate more leads, and save you valuable time, helping you make this the best decade ever. So let's get into the Facebook Catalog Manager. Okay, to get inside of the Facebook Catalog Manager, you need to be inside of your Business Manager application. If you're not familiar with Business Manager, you're not alone. I find a lot of realtors and investors have a business page in Facebook, but they never installed the Business Manager application. If you'd like, I have a free masterclass below that you can sign up for that will walk you through how to set up the Business Manager and give you an A to Z training on how to create Facebook ads that actually perform. What we wanna do inside of the business manager, in this case, I'm starting with my ad campaign. So I have a, I'm inside of the ad manager in Facebook. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the uh, nine dots over here and I have catalog manager right here under shortcuts. If this is the first time you're getting the catalog manager, Facebook keeps track of these shortcuts. You're gonna find it at the very bottom under here called catalog manager. This will bring us into the catalog manager. From here at the overview, I can uh, set up my data sources here and I can start creating dynamic ads. In this video, I'm gonna focus on creating the data source and loading the data in. I will have another uh, video on the channel very soon this week uh, where I'll go through creating a dynamic ad using this data source and catalog manager. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get noticed when that video comes out. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna come over here to data sources and there's a blue button over here that says add home listings. When I click on that, Facebook gives me three different options. The one I'm gonna show in the video is a simple file upload. I'm gonna take a Excel spreadsheet or I have numbers because I'm a Mac user. I have all my listings in a file format that's in Excel uh, and I'm gonna export it out as a CSV or text file and then I'm going to use the file load method to bring it into Catalog Manager. We also can schedule feeds and use Google Sheets. I'll have other videos that I, I share on the channel, which does more advanced type setups where I can connect the catalog right to the MLS or to a shared Google Sheet that people update and have those ads automatically be updated for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get started on here on file upload and I'm going to hit next. So inside of data sources, Facebook gives me three different options of how to load data into the catalog manager. I can use a file upload method where I take a spreadsheet or some text file and load it in. I can have a scheduled feed that may come from something like the MLS directly. So I can have a scheduling system from another website that all my listings up there will automatically update the catalog in Facebook. And finally, I can have a Google sheet here where I can have a shared Google Drive with a Google Sheet where my team can update all the homes in that sheet and the Facebook ad dynamically updates for me. For this method and for this short video, I'm gonna cover file upload method. Now Facebook, it's critically important to use their guide. So right here, there's a button that says create file and they have some training on uh, how to, how to leverage this, this guide. Uh, this is a, uh, in this case, I, as I mentioned, I use uh, numbers on Mac, on a Macintosh. If you use Microsoft Excel, it may open up an Excel for you. It's critically important. You don't change any of these columns or it will not work. So basically you have a listing ID, a name, availability, and so forth. The first thing you're going to do is at the very top, there's a description field. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just swap over to one that's already filled out. So you don't have to see me type, but you don't want to see Smarty type. So uh, in this case, uh, I have all my October listings for ProEdge Realty Group here in the sheet. I'll explain what they are. So the first column is the listing ID. So if you're a realtor, this could be the NLS number. If you're an investor, this could just be a random number you put on your, your deals. We have a name. The name's critically important because the name is what they're going to see in the ad. So when they're seeing the picture, underneath each picture will be this name. So, uh, and I'll show you, you can actually configure that when we do the ad creation in the other video. Um, we have the availability, it's for sale. And then as I come over here, I have the property address, city, state, the region, um, and country over here. And then postal code. As I come further over, I have Latin long. So uh, I like to have people find properties based on where they are right now. So if they're, look, they're standing on this corner, it can give me directional of where all these properties are with Latin long. We also have neighborhood. And then as I continue over, we have the image itself. Now what Facebook needs is the URL where the image is that you're gonna use in the ad. So uh, you could use a shared Google Drive and then get the URL from that shared drive to copy the link. Or you could use a, a number of other websites out there that let you share photographs. So I actually like one and I'll actually do a training video on it uh, at, at some point on this channel uh, called Post IMG, which is Post Image. It's a great solution. It's, uh, there's a free version and a paid account, depends on how many photographs you have. But what I do is I take all my home photographs and I load them up to Post IMG and then I get the, the individual URL for each photograph of each one of these houses. And that's what's going to be inside the Facebook ad when somebody's navigating through my listings. Now, what you can do, and I'll, I'll just po uh, uh, point it out here, is you could up in here, uh, right mouse and add additional columns. So if you want to add more than one in image, I think you can do up to four images per house in the dynamic ad. Uh, I've tried it a couple times. It works great. So they stop in each house. They can scroll a few pictures and then go on to the next house in the ad format. What you would do is you'd copy and then each, this is the zero, which is the, the main photograph. You would have a one, a two, a three, and a four. So actually it's up to five, I think you can have. Um, you would just have individual columns for each of the images that you wanna show in the house. We'll, we'll keep it simple with one now. We have the price column. You want to make sure the price is just into a, a number format. Don't get uh, fancy in, in setting it up um, with, um, you know, dollar signs and stuff. You can keep the price um, very, very simple. Now, the next column is critically important. This is the call to action, which is called the URL. This URL can go to a squeeze page up on your CRM. So uh, here at EXP, I use KV Core. So this could be a squeeze page for each home. Uh, so when they see the ad and they want to learn more details, they click the learn more button It takes them to that squeeze page. I actually, as a, um, uh, a chat botter myself, I use a, the ProEdge chatbot for real estate and I have details below in the, in the description of this video. Um, it's a full featured chatbot. So what I do is I link uh, what's called a URL from many chat um, into what's called my contact us flow. So when somebody sees an ad, they click on it, the, ch the chat bot's going to engage that person and arrange to have a call with me or set up a listing appointment uh, and or a showing if it's a home I'm selling, that'll all be handled by the chat bot. But if you're not a chat bot person, you just simply want to go to a landing page, put that URL right here. We have a description. Here's a, a, a tagging. Then we have number of beds, baths, property type, and finally, uh, the listing type is for sale and we have the number of units. So they are the columns that Facebook is expecting to see. Uh, obviously for a single family home, it's a unit of one. If you're selling a duplex, it'll be two, a quad, four, et cetera. It depends on what you're selling as a realtor or an investor. You're going to put that in there. Now here's another critically important step. In order for this file to work, we're going to be exporting this out because I'm using numbers. I'm going to export it out as a CSV or text file. Um, Facebook gave us a row up here, which describes each column. They need you to remove this before it'll properly 
uh, import. So what I'm going to do is hit delete row here. That's a critical, critical step for you is get rid of that, this, you know, descriptive uh, row up there. You'll do the same in Excel if you have Excel, just get rid of the row. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say export and say export to CSV. So um, I'll create a common delimited uh, text file uh, right here. I'll call it the ProEdge listings October 2020. And I'll drop that on my desk and I already had one. So I'll just hit um, replace. So now I have what Facebook needs in order to load that data. So again, you hit create file and then you put all your listings into that file. You export it as a CSV. And when you're ready, you hit next. And this is where you're going to drop that file that we just created. So I'm going to say upload file. And on my desktop, I'm going to select the CSV that I just created. And what Facebook's doing is it's verifying that you use their template. So if you got, if you redid a column or move columns around, um, Facebook is going to give you a big red X here saying it's not the right format. So it's critically important you use their format and just load your deals into that sheet. We're going to hit next. Over here, we have our source. We can identify the, 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 the currency default. So in this case, I'm in the US, so it's uh, dollars, US dollars. And then I'm going to hit the upload button. Now what's happening is uh, it is verifying the data. And what Facebook's doing in a minute here, it's going to go and pull all of those properties in my spreadsheet uh, into um, the system here. So over in here, we have 16 properties that were pulled in and uh, there's a little yellow thing here so I can look and see what my, my item was. Some of the properties might have an issue. I can look at an actual report here and see all right, listing type. And this is another one that I wanted to point out. I deliberately did this so you can see the problem. Facebook in the listing type column has specific values it's looking for in order to properly load into their system. So up in here, if it's for rent by agent, by owner, sale by agent, for sale by owner, foreclosed, new construction, new listing, or other, you're going to want to make sure that that is inside of um, your sheet in that column so you have a clean load. So now if I come to data sources, you'll see I have my August listings, and now I jumped all the way to October listings. So um, you can load these each and every month. You can have it more dynamic. So as listings are coming on and off your plate, houses are being sold, new ones are being added, or as an investor, you have a, a wholesaler, you get one deal, another deal, another deal. You want to keep these dynamic. You're going to use more of the advanced techniques where you're going to connect it to a shared Google sheet and have people load the deals on that sheet and then have it automatically updated. So in this case, I have my data source. That's as easy as it is to get your listings inside of the catalog manager in order to start doing advertising. If I come over here to the items, you'll see that I have all of the uh, uh, properties here. So um, I have all the attributes, which is the fields, um, any issues I had, and then I have the, the set names here. So one of the things you have all these homes, which have a beautiful um, a picture. So you'll see each one of these uh, houses. Here's a house in North Wales. That is the column, uh, uh, I think it was B in my spreadsheet I was telling you about how I had the it displays underneath the picture. So I have the Grand Mission Estates, uh, Albany Oaks, North Wales. Um, and then I have the price of the home right here. So all of those properties, and it's pulling that image right from the post IMG site I showed you, in the URL column where your pictures are, that's important that you have that set. And now you have a beautiful catalog that you can now start advertising. And as I go down through here, I have lots and lots of listings that I'm going to be doing a single ad and have all these in a carousel for somebody to shop on Facebook for my listings and then get details, either going to a squeeze page or a chat bot and making sure that we can move this inventory uh, to a new buyer and uh, get our commissions as a realtor or our deal with a, as a, for a wholesaler. In another video, I'm going to be coming back in here and I'm going to show you how to manage what's called sets. So how to then take this list and maybe group them by type of home. So maybe by price point or number of beds. I can create a number of sets and then what I'm going to do with those sets is then I'm going to trigger a Facebook ad. 
So uh, stay tuned. Uh, make sure that you um, uh, like and, uh, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss this next video. But I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step how to create the ads, dynamic ads, from the data source of Catalog Manager. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, I have your back. If you have any questions, leave comments below and I will get back to you. And as always, make this the best decade ever. Thank you.